Morning, everybody. Welcome back. Wow, so much has come to light over the past 24 hours. And for anybody reviewing this video, understand that this is not any in any way justifying what is happening in the Stu Crane and Rushka. We're not saying that it's okay, you know, what Rushka is doing. That's not the purpose of these videos. We're examining the spiritual aspects of what is happening over there in the spiritual realm. So that's a little disclaimer for anybody who's going to review this video. Now, why do I even have to say that? Well, we want this message to get out far and wide. And any time, you know, things like censorship come into play or mis uh, you know, misinterpretation of what we're trying to do here, we have to be very clear don't we so that everyone can hear this spiritual message now interestingly you know some of the uh, some of the censorship that's come about surrounding these topics happens because we are not able to deal with the situation with these people I'm careful being careful with my words here because the Bible says, be wise as serpents. And a lot of people, that, that bothers people. But if you really think about what that verse is saying, it's saying that we have to think like they think. In how we address some of these issues. So we do have to be wise in how we present the information. Because what good are we if we have no voice, right? There are spiritual rules and laws that God allows us to operate within. And... The enemy can't silence God's word. So that's why we're still here. We're still here because God's word cannot be silenced. And as long as we operate within the rules, the spiritual rules set about by the Most High, then the serpent cannot silence us. And that's why we're still here. Sometimes people ask, how is it that you continue to have a voice? Well, that's why. Because we've been wise, haven't we? We operate within the confines of spiritual law that allows the Most High to allow us to keep functioning and getting the word out because people need to hear what we're about to show you today. Now, we've got several shows scheduled. And if you're new to the channel, understand that basically over the next two or three days, you're going to hear information that you haven't heard anywhere else. And it came from all of you. I just got a story this morning from Rebecca about the origins of a lab going all the way back to Bo Mama. And now we know why he's sweating in I Pet Go 2. Because his foot is next to the coin. And that was the little golden calf. It's the secret behind everything that's happening over in Stu Crane right now. So that was an amazing discovery. She got that from a brother in the UK and we'll be covering that on Friday tomorrow we'll be going into other stories as well so if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and we'll go ahead and get into today's show now the topic of today's show will be a vision that I had night before last that tattoos and voodoo and black goo are all connected now, here's the thing. Tattoos enhance the magic of voodoo rituals. I was doing some research into this. And what I found was just chilling. That these tattooed symbols have meaning. And they enhance the magic of voodoo. Let's read about voodoo tattoos and then we'll get into the spiritual aspects of what all this means here are some tattoos that are involved with voodoo and they represent each of the voodoo gods as you can see here here's uh baron samiti there's also arozuli avizan Here's some more, which are pretty much the same ones, but this is a little bit easier to read. 
These are tattoos that people put on their bodies to enhance the effects of voodoo. Now, this show is very important because this goes to the very root of everything that we're doing on this channel. We are fighting their magic, aren't we? And for some reason, God has given us the eyes to see to help people wake up from the spell that they are under. So here are the different gods. And again, they use these symbols tattooed on people's bodies to enhance the magic. Now let me read about this. This is from one of their own sites. Voodoo doll tattoos. Symbols. If you want to get a voodoo tattoo, you might want to include some of the more magical components. These voodoo symbols are much more accessible and common in Haitian voodoo. There are many artists who create designs specifically meant for magic effects. One such design is a variant of something called a legba. Now, legba appears in these images here. I'm not going to go back to them, but these legba stand as a connection between our world and the spirit world. And communication between the two often starts there. The presence of both beneficial spirits made up of all your predecessors as well as negative spirits that lead their own lives is a common voodoo belief. Tattoos are often believed to be imbued with magical power. So there are even some symbols meant to protect the user from the possession of evil spirits or call for help from their ancestors. Now, of course, all of this is blasphemy and spell casting, all the abominations that the Bible talks about. And in fact, in the Old Testament, God made a covenant with his peoples saying, do not tattoo your body. Now, I don't know how that applies today under our covenant under Christ. Uh, and I don't know if this is, I'm not judging people who have tattoos. Most people have tattoos now. It's like the way the world is now. But understand there could be some magic and sorcery associated to this that you didn't know about to this point. And so you need to confront that maybe in your life and pray on it. Maybe things are going wrong in your life because of something you put on your body. Let's keep reading here. The guardian of this knowledge is known as Grand Bois, who has a spirit associated with Mapu trees. He also guards all things, including magic secrets and healing. Voodoo tattoos are concepts... And concepts are not only representations of just one culture and religion. There are hundreds of tribes in northern Africa when the American slave trade began. And every one of those tribes had very distinct traditions. Even the collection of different cultures that we call voodoo has several distinct types. When getting a voodoo tattoo, you are the only one who decides its significance and meaning. Since it is a representation of yourself and your spirituality and whatever purpose you give it is the meaning that will stick it's interesting because i've talked to people who've gotten tattoos and almost every person i talk to either regrets it or they want more tattoos it's never really in the middle there's definitely something to that and they talk about that it reminded them of their past life or they feel labeled because of the tattoo that's on them of their previous life that maybe they've moved on from but they can't remove it from their body so what they're saying here actually makes sense that this thing attaches to you and you can't get rid of it now here's what else was revealed to me in a vision night before last that the black ink used for the tattoos is a metaphor for the blue blood black goo and that this whole thing we went through for the last three years was basically one giant voodoo ritual spell. Complete with a needle and a tattoo. Something that sticks with you that you can't get rid of. And so the entire world is under a voodoo spell. Now, that's about all I can say about that. And Tom will help you if you're lost about what exactly I'm talking about. Now, here's where we go on to even a deeper level. Because, in fact, what is voodoo really? When you think about what it really is. It's the creation of an inanimate object or a counterfeit scenario. In the case uh, that we know about, is a doll. That's usually what they use, right? 
but it can also be just a fake story or a counterfeit scenario, can it? And then the sorcerer harms or manipulates or controls that fake image so that it manifests in the true reality. That is the base tenet of the religion of voodoo. And so here's what was revealed to me. That's Hollywood. What do you mean, Casey? Well, they create all these counterfeit or fake scenarios in movies, don't they? And in commercials and film. And then they manipulate those characters, which manifests into our reality. Now, most people call this programming. But now that I explained it to you in the way that I just did, it's actually a form of voodoo magic, isn't it? Look at all the decodes we've done. Thousands of decodes over the last 10 years of things created in Hollywood and then manifesting in reality. It's voodoo. Now understand that the spell that has been cast is one of a strong delusion. And maybe that's what this is all about. The strong delusion. Now we had covered the cult of Jab Jab not too long ago, didn't we? Which also comes out of voodoo ritual. During the Jab Jab carnival, they would cover themselves in black goo or ink. And they would wear devil horns. And here's another clue. I dug deeper because I wanted to find out about black ink or ink used in tattoos. And look at this. There's actually very high levels of copper in tattoo ink. Here's the study. Let me pull it up here so you can see the title. A survey of metals found in tattoo inks. This is from 2017. And down here, you see, let's make this bigger so everybody can see this. Uh-oh. What just happened right there? Okay, here we go. It says here. That these heavy metals exist in the tattoo ink. Iron was reserved in nearly 90% of the ink samples. And is suspected to be in the form of iron oxide, which is known a known darkener used in tattoo inks. Iron is not usually considered as a toxin. However, some of the inks with this exceptionally high iron concentrations may be a cause for concern, as iron can be potentially harmful at very high concentrations and can cause problems with cardiovascular central nervous system, kidney, liver, blood. The metals of highest concern, particularly chromium, nickel, copper, barium, and lead can be seen below in figure 2.6. I'll show you that in a second. Ink samples containing copper above the, this is like safe levels. Samples were grouped by brand and only brands with more than 10 ink samples were used. So here is the actual levels of copper and all these different brands there were 10 different brands looked at and they show the parts per million of copper in each one now to give fair balance here the article says that the form that the copper is in shouldn't cause a problem because it's like bound we're talking about a spiritual manifestation here that copper is even in these inks and what it means on a spiritual level, which we've covered, right? The mixing of the blue and red blood together. This is what the enemy wants. So, you know, of course, he's going to dab a little bit of his copper into these tattoo inks to drive the point home because this is all about piercing the flesh, isn't it? Let's keep reading about copper in tattoo inks. Figure, show, uh, figure 4 shows the copper distribution between brands and shows more or less uniformity among manufacturers compared to the previous figures. The widespread presence of copper in high concentrations in tattoo pigments is most likely associated with copper thalocyanin, blue BN, and 
thiocyanin, green ink pigments that have been used in tattoos for almost 100 years. While copper can cause anemia, liver and kidney damage, as well as stomach and intestinal irritation, it is thought to be relatively safe when it is bound to thalocyanin. So, this is the part I was telling you that it's actually, they're saying it's safe. During tattoo removal procedure, however, this metal ion would be freed from its thalocyanin cage and would dissolve into the bloodstream. So, when you go to get a tattoo removed, watch out. If you're starting to have anemic symptoms and you've just had a tattoo removed, it's probably because your body just got flooded with copper. Let's keep reading here. Distributions of metals found in tattoo inks sorted by color are, no, are shown in figure 7. Bright green inks were found to contain high concentrations of chromium, mag manganese, iron, copper, bromine, barium, as well as traces of lead. Yellow inks contain similarly substantial amounts of chromium, iron, nickel, and barium, and traces of lead. High concentrations of copper and bromine were found to be present in blue inks. So, this is a concern. It says here, while a few of these elements are considered non-toxic, a majority of these findings are cause for concern because it is well established that chromium, manganese, nickel, copper, bromine, barium, and lead, all of which were commonly found in tattoo inks, have adverse health effects. So, that is the study, and I'll link this, of course. I know a lot of people have tattoos that probably come to this channel. So, just understand what you're dealing with. Again, this isn't about judgment. This is about getting down to the truth and on our path to finding the truth i came across this so i have to present it to you now i didn't find any voodoo tattoos on angelina jolie because that's where this rabbit hole started didn't we but she did live in the heart of creole voodoo country in the french district of new orleans her and her husband ex-husband now brad pitt bought a house there and then one of you sent me these images of where she supposedly put too much powder on her face going to this movie premiere and i was like wait a minute let's look at some of these other images of her with too much powder on her face how did brad and Brad sitting right next to her, and no one seems to notice or tell her, which tells me that it was likely intentional. Now, why would she be putting powder on her face? Here's Brad right next to her here. Hon, you got too much powder on your face. Anyone who, who's ever had a significant other, you, you, you know, you do this. You tell your significant other because no one else is going to tell him, right? She's, you know, popular uh, actress. You got to let people know. Hey, you got lint on your back or you got powder or you got a little stain there, right? So what is this really all about? Well, I think I know what it's all about or could be all about. Let's go back to this image here and do a little comparison. Because I looked at these ancient voodoo gods and look at what I found. All of them have the white powder on their face. Here's Papa Legba. And on your right of your screen, Baron Samade, same thing. The white powder on the face. And maybe this is what she was after. I don't want to focus too much on these images because they stay with you. And so, we're not going to get caught up on that. But, needless to say, the very same white face. Which begs the question, was she doing this intentionally for some reason? Now, here's where this gets personal. And then we'll get into the 2019 Economist cover. What most of you don't know is that I am from Caribbean descent. My great-grandfather was full-blood Jamaican. 
and own property on the Little Cayman Island. Now, I shared this with the channel, but the channel was much smaller. So those of you that are new to the channel are just hearing this for the first time. Now, my great-grandfather was a pastor, and he built churches before he met my grandmother. He was also a longshoreman, and he met my grandmother on the dock. I don't know if she was in the south when they met. And then they both got together and moved to Sacramento, where my grandfather met my grandmother, which was her son, met my grandmother. Now, back to my great-grandfather. Basically, his, uh, his wife, my great-grandmother, she passed the land down that my great-grandfather owned in the Grand Cayman to her son, which is my grandfather. But he was an alcoholic, and the land was confiscated after he failed to register the land because basically they were going through this process in the Cayman Islands in the 1970s, right around the time I was born, where they basically turned everything into digital. So they basically collected up all the deeds and they gave people like a five-year window to show up with their deed and digitize everything. And if you didn't do that, then you lost your land. It was confiscated. This is what they do to the people, you guys. This is what they do to people. Why would they confiscate the land in the Grand Cayman? Because these are islands. They have high strategic significance as well as uh, travel industry, cruise ship ports. Everything's corrupt. It's very difficult in places like this to hold on to your property. Okay. Now, why am I telling you this story and what significance does it have into what we're talking about today? Well, I tell you this because it seems that this fight against Hollywood voodoo is likely a generational thing manifesting spiritually. Now, when I started this channel, I wasn't thinking that, oh, I need to pick up the torch where my grandfather, great grandfather left off to bring people to Christ and fight voodoo in Hollywood. I wasn't thinking that. But it then it just kind of became that, didn't it? I didn't know the the end from the beginning when I started this. So, I'm starting to wonder if this is some kind of generational battle. You know, going all the way back to my great grandfather who was trying to bring Christ to the people of a region that was steeped in voodoo. So, pray for this channel. We're doing important work to expose this stuff. I am fully convinced now that Hollywood is a form of voodoo magic. Creating reality and then manifesting it into our reality. And the only way you can undo a spell is with the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Can I get an amen for that? Now, let's get into this Economist cover. This is shocking. Now, again, one of you sent this to me. And you're going to notice that this cover is in reverse, isn't it? Why is it in reverse, Casey? Well, because it was printed in reverse. Now, this was printed long before the spam demic. Yet, you're going to see all this symbolism on this 2019 Economist cover that is just really weird. The first thing I want to talk about is Mona Angelina Jolie. She appears on the cover, and it's accepted and talked about by the people that printed it that they were channeling Angelina Jolie here. What is this about? Why she appears the Mona Lisa? Well, she has become the spokesperson for world suffering. She's been to 30 plus countries behind uh, enemy lines, you know, the front lines, whatever you want to call it, uh, lobbying for the refugees. This has been her role. Now, this woman has some pretty dark roots. I had a couple people come on here and say, why are you picking on her? I'm not picking on her. Did I say anything bad about her? No, we're just talking about real history that's going on. And it's been and has gone on for some time. Videos have surfaced from long ago. Here's one right here. I'm not going to play it, but there's some pretty creepy stuff going on. With rituals and her drinking 
the the blood of uh, her husband Billy Bob Thornton. Bizarre interviews talking about rituals that she was involved in, and of course her obsession with Maleficent. And there were she's been interviewed about Maleficent, and she actually looked like she was just reveling in the evil of the character and saying I was so cool just not normal statements and then she's got this other side of her which travels to all these countries and lobbies for the refugees but you notice nothing is ever done no there is never any condemnation of the people that are causing the refugees so this is really weird she appears on this cover and now she's been a very outspoken advocate for the refugees of the Stu Crane, bringing this 2019 cover full circle. Now, what else do we see here? Well, we see this DNA strand on the arm. What could this possibly mean? Well, we're dealing with a lot of stuff related to DNA, aren't we, right now? Look at the barcode on the stork, which is representative of newborn babies. Right? So, do they want to put a barcode on all newborns? Well, I believe they probably already are. Right next to that is the Horseman of the Apocalypse. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Now, I think we can all agree that the White Horse of the Apocalypse has already been released. I think we've pretty much established that on this channel, and many other channels have as well. We won't take credit for that. I don't take credit for anything that is presented on this channel. It all comes from you guys and the Holy Spirit. But, it's widely known that Toxone, the ribbon, the toxin, the crown, the corona, the bow, all of that seems to suggest that the white horse has already been released. What else do we have here? There's one that talks about facial recognition. Now this one's interesting because a lot of people don't want to come to terms with this. That under Thump, this whole facial recognition thing proliferated. What am I talking about? Well, National ID. He actually promoted this. Now, it never became federal law under him in terms of, you know, making everybody have it. It was already in place before his presidency. But here's what we do know. States across the nation under his presidency picked up this national ID as a requirement in which even if you chose not to get this this uh, national ID your face was still being captured by a facial recognition real ID compliant camera what is that what's well, just a word sandwich for basically the camera has such high definition that it basically captured a picture of you that can now be matched to any camera that you might come across in your daily comings and goings. Just because you didn't get the real ID when you went in to renew your driver's license, you still got your face taken by one of these cameras. High resolution cameras. And you all know what I'm talking about. You all went in and got your ID renewed during this presidency and you saw that these bright light cameras that would shine on your face that's so they can get every detail well now that was the big bait and switch that was a big rope a dope oh you have a choice you can decide to do it or not we live in a free America but really your face was already captured so it doesn't it doesn't even matter they already got your face let's keep looking at this image here 2019 economist cover look at this elephant now to me this looks like an indian elephant well a few years after this cover printed 
India got hit particularly hard with Vidco 19, didn't they? Two tusks, two shots, and a lightning bolt where the tusks are. What could that mean? Wow. Now, who else makes an appearance on this cover? There's Pew Sit and Spin, and it says Pipelines. What's that about? Well, he is now threatening to pull the supply of Rushkin gas to Europe. Why? Because his country has been hit with sanctions. Unprecedented. And, you know, one minute we call someone the enemy of the world, don't we? Like, like Maduro. Where did I put that article? He's the enemy of the world right now, isn't he? And now, all of a sudden, just because he freed a couple of detained Americans, we're going to do business with him again and accept his oil. Why? So we can trade one dictator for another. You can't just turn coat like this and flip back and forth. Sends a very wrong and inconsistent message to people who are supposed to believe the American lies. So now all of a sudden we're back in bed with Maduro. Right? After all the sanctions we put under him. Now I'm not saying any of these people are great people. I don't think Maduro is. I don't think Pew Sit and Spin is. Any of them. But this is just, this shows the hypocrisy of what we do in our country. Now, what else do we have in this image? And make sure you guys are with me. We'll keep going with the Economist cover. This is very important information, bringing everything forward to the present. Okay, you guys are with me. Let's get back into this Economist cover. What else do we have on this cover? Well, I didn't know this at the time. But look at what we have here. The Electric Kingdom. Eclipsing the Middle East oil. Eclipsing and replacing. Now, we did a video not too long ago exposing Saudi Arabia. And they actually had a, this short video, a promotional video for their uh, race track thing that they have going on over there and they created an entire fleet of electric cars for the racetrack in the in the name of this video you can look it up right now on youtube is called the electric kingdom co-figure we coined that term and now it's manifesting isn't it well why is it significant well we get a significant portion of our oil from saudi arabia and they're now Make, basically making the statement that they are ready to switch over to the electric kingdom. Look at this. This map seems to be Africa, doesn't it? This seems to be like the Mediterranean. There you see Italy in the boot and all that. Here's the, uh, here's the uh, Indian Ocean maybe. And so this is the Middle East. So this electric car is definitely covering up the Middle East. It's eclipsing it, isn't it? Now, how can Saudi Arabia say this with such confidence that they're ready to switch the world over to electric? I'll tell you right now. And this is chilling. Because what this means is that they don't even have to go that far away from oil to be confident that they'll be okay and that they'll be financially sound going into the electric kingdom. Why? Because fossil fuels still account for the majority of how electricity is produced. Natural gas and oil. It will still be needed in the new electric kingdom world. But here's the problem. It will all be consolidated under the power of these people. They will create the electricity and divvy it out to whoever they want to. A middleman. Now... What kind of business plan is that? Why not just let us burn our own fossil fuels? Why do they want to consolidate it under their control? Isn't that a very poor economic plan? Because you're creating one energy with another energy when you could just be 
allow people to get their own electricity or use it in its natural form. Let me give you an example. What's better to do in terms of the environment? Is it better for a fisherman to sell directly to you and I, like at a fish market? So you go to the dock where the fishermen are showing up, you buy the fish directly from there, or is it better for those fish to go to a grocery store? Well, every time something changes hands, there are additional costs because each party has to mark it up. That in turn causes more waste and much less efficiency. And that's exactly what happens when you, you know, try to create electricity with natural gas and oil instead of just using the natural gas and oil by itself before it goes through that process. You're wasting energy because all that oil has to be trucked and moved to an electric power plant, doesn't it? They have to have these electric power plants everywhere. So in the uh, transmission of these, you know, oil and gas to these places, you're losing efficiency because you got to pay the truck drivers. You got to maintain pipelines, right? So this makes absolutely no sense. The only reason I can think of is power and control. They're saying the environment, but really, you know, until you completely get off of these fossil fuels, then that's just hogwash. It's a pipe dream. Now, to give fair balance in all this, they are saying that, oh, eventually we'll build out the electric infrastructure with natural types of, you know, energy, like wind and solar. And then that will eventually replace all the fossil fuel plants we have to use to make the electricity. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're always going to have gas because it's so cheap for them to get that's the easiest way for them to you know create electricity it's the easiest way and they're just telling us what we want to hear so that we all fall into the electric kingdom prison now what else do we have here well everyone's probably jumping at the bit casey look at the qr code yes there's a qr code probably stands for the smack scene passport again in 2019 before we ever had a spam dimmick now what do we have here i think these are vr glasses virtual reality because we really are living in a virtual reality right now aren't we where everyone is under a strong delusion to the truth now down here we have what appears to be, I guess, what do you think these are? Ballot boxes? Ballot boxes. Because, you know, to me, this really seemed to be the year of fake uh, elections. Where, you know, what the people really wanted was the opposite of what they were given. And it seemed to be a turning point. We always knew that there was people meddling and messing with, you know, these, these votes. But this year hit an all-time high. Like, basically, all of the controllers are doing the opposite of the will of the people. Now, on his chest, it says, Me Too, hashtag, it's backwards, of course. It's one of the only images on here that read the correct way. And so, what's that mean? Well, it means that Me Too is backwards, doesn't it? It means that it's backwards, doesn't it? Look what happened with the egg stain debacle. None of those victims were listened to. The one instance where the Me Too actually applied to somebody. The one instance where it could have made all the difference in the world. The victims were completely ignored. Except for the one victim that sold out, got her paycheck, and moved on. There was no real justice. There were huge lists of people in the book that never even got questioned. So, Me Too was a big fail. Wasn't it? And here's what really happened with this. You know, some news came out the other day. Let's see if we can cover this today.
see if I have it pulled up. But basically, uh, let's see here. I'll just go off of memory. Article just came to light. This woman was complaining about Cosby. And now all of a sudden, me too, she says. Right? Me too. Well, Cosby used to frequent the Playboy Mansion. And he was in bed with, uh, what's his name? The guy that runs the Playboy Mansion. And not literally in bed, but you know what I mean. Basically, Cosby would go there and get his victims, people that worked there. And then, you know, uh, what's his name? Shoot, I should have had that story pulled up for you guys. Anyway, he would run cover for him. And then he would threaten to fire the people if they came forward. This woman was one of them in the story that I had pulled up this morning. She, she said she was going to report it. But he told her, no, if you do, I'll fire you from the Playboy Mansion. And the first thing that went through my mind was, you know, she, her story was, oh, I woke up in the morning and there was blood and basically she inferred that she was drugged and didn't remember what happened. And the first thing that came to my mind when I was hearing this story is, what did you expect was going to happen working at the Playboy Mansion? And that seems to be the hallmark of the Me Too movement. What it became. A bunch of people in shady situations. Inviting people up to their hotel rooms. Um, you know. Trying to flirt with getting ahead. By dangling a carrot. Of. Hey. You might get some of this. If you do this for me. And then of course. Bill Cosby took advantage of that. But at the end of the day. If you don't put yourself in these situations then you probably don't join the list of Me Too's. Because these predators thrive off of these situations, which is why Bill Cosby was hanging around the Playboy Mansion. Because here you're standing around a bunch of morally corrupt people who are doing stuff like this all the time with other people, and he thought he could slide in and get some action, which is exactly what he did. So... Let's move on. Now, here is probably one of the most profound images on this 2019 Economist cover. I'm going to zoom it up here and let's see who gets it first in the chat. Let me go in here. I want to make this fair. Look at the image and now let's go into the chat. Now, remember, 2019, nobody knew what somebody in the chat is about to tell us about what you just looked at. This is recent information. Let me give you a clue. Supposedly happened uh, just, uh, I guess, last or a few days ago, actually. It happened. Or they say it happened. Let's see who gets it for. Yes. Nicole got it first. A satellite hitting the moon. Remember that? Remember that? That happened a few days ago. And when did they announce that? Uh, what was it? Maybe a few months ago, but it was not in 2019 when this cover came out. So they knew they were going to run this, this operation of telling everyone that a satellite hit the moon. And here it is right here on the 2019 Economist cover, long before they admitted this, this was going to happen or even knew about it, or it was even physically possible for it to happen. Bizarre, right? Bizarre. There it is right there. Now, let's get into some of this other stuff. We're going to move on from the Economist cover here. Now, one of you sent me this. The SALT negotiations. Now, Joe Lee played in this film called SALT. She was a sleeper agent, a Rushkin sleeper agent, by the way. We decoded that a couple days ago. And so here is a real life assault. This was the strategic arms uh, mili demilitarization talks or militarization limitation talks. Sorry. Here it is right here. And this was between Rushka and the U.S. This was the late 70s. 
and it was all about the downsizing of the nuclear arsenal. Salt. So here we are, full circle, and everyone's talking about nukes that aren't supposed to exist. Now, what else do we have here? Let's get into some more of these headlines. So, Rushka is threatening to pull the plug on gas to Europe. Now, this would be devastating. And this is going to force Europe to fast track their road to the electric kingdom, right? Because without gas, how do you keep your house warm? Without natural gas, how do you do a lot of things? How do you do a lot of things? So this is the threat. I don't know what's going to happen. We should have thought about this before we started sanctioning the heck out of Rushka. When this has really nothing to do with us. But apparently this is the case. This could be their dark winter. There's the last story we're going to go over today. Again, we've got a lot more stuff to go over tomorrow. Um, we're going to get into uh, Brittany Griner. There, she has now come to the forefront as the top hostage in Rushka. We'll talk about her tomorrow. And they released photos of her over there. We're going to talk about the Ukraine program of biology going on over there. I will show you this one. I was looking to see how many films were filmed in Key you Stu Crane, let's call it. Sorry, trying to use the proper language here. And I went into IMDB and look at this. 666 titles. Now many of you noticed that my backup channel has 66,600 subscribers so if you're not subscribed to the backup channel we need to get off of that number don't we but understand they do this on purpose they try to tag and label people with marks don't they so go over to the backup channel enter the stars reloaded and subscribe over there so we can so we can get us off of the 66,600 now i don't believe the numbers obviously this channel that we're on now is far below what it should be We've been stuck at 105,000 subscribers for like nine months now, haven't we? And everybody knows that this channel should have 500,000 subscribers. But they've, they keep uh, unsubscribing people, don't they? In fact, if you want to get an idea of how often they unsubscribe people from the channel, YouTube does this. Uh, everyone chime in in the chat and let everybody know if you've ever been unsubscribed from this channel. We can give some feedback to YouTube to stop doing that. There's a thousand of you, 1100 of you in the chat right now. So everyone who has been unsubscribed from this channel in the past 10 years without your knowledge, please chime in and let YouTube know what is going on so they can fix the problem. Now, let's get into this last story here. Let me move this over here so we have this for later. I want to make sure I put all the links to everything we cover uh, in today's pinned comment. We'll put this video of Jolie in there so you guys can see that. Now on Friday, we're going to be getting into what the Z means. The letter Z on the tank of the Rushkins. And I believe I know what it means. There have been some theories as to what it means. But I believe we've gotten down to the bottom of it. So definitely tune in for that show on Friday. So let's see. Make sure we have... Okay. Now, here's our last story for today before we sign off. This is creepy. Scientists try to solve the mystery of a 300-year-old mummified mermaid. Currently being worshipped at a temple. Look at this bizarre-looking creature. Apparently, this thing has a paddle tail. And it's, it's just creepy. I'm not going to sit there and dwell on it because it's really creepy. But let's read this. Japanese scientists have started investigating the mysterious mermaid mummy. It's long been an object of worship at a temple in Okayama Prefecture. 
team of researchers from the Kurosaki University of Science and Arts are conducting scientific analysis of the mummified remains of the mysterious icon to determine what they're actually composed of. Mermaid mummy, which measures around a foot, has earned its name for having an upper body that appears to be human and a lower body that looks like a fish tail. The three or hundred year old mummy, which has retained its nails, teeth, and hair over the years, has also maintained the eerie expression of a screaming child. So, this is really weird stuff, you guys. People worshipping this mummy to try to end Vidco 19. Now, let's go back into the chat here and we'll end the show with a quick discussion and a shout out to a channel that I've followed for years, Truth Stream Media. They did a great documentary on concentration camps in America in the 1940s, which they rounded up all people based on their race and put them in these huge camps in the middle of the desert. Took all their property, gave it over to the Dust Bowl people from the Midwest, and then after the war was over, they sent, they didn't give the Japanese their land back along the West Coast. They sent them out to the Midwest so they could till the messed up land. So yes, in America, they do take people's property. Now, during that era, it was all about, um, they said that, oh, these Japanese people could see, you know, our movements, our troop movements and things. And they could report it back to their land. This was the fear back then. And that simple fear alone justified them rounding these people up. And I was in the chat over there during the premiere. And I was thinking to myself, we are so close to that right now. And we're not even in a real war with Rushka. But yet, look what's happening to all these Russian artists, athletes, and businessmen. Their property is, in effect, being confiscated, isn't it? As they're being cancel cultured. We're just one internment camp away from exactly what we did in the 1940s. We have not learned one single lesson. What is next? Is the president going to get up and say, oh, these Rushkins could be still sympathetic to Pew Sit and Spin. And so we need to round them up because they can see our movements. Is that where we're still at in this country? Is that where we're still at? So I recommend you guys watch that documentary. I think it's about an hour, hour and a half long. And it's all about the history of America and what we did to people. Now, I know Japanese people and never once have I heard them mention this era that they went through. They are the most humble and kind people and there was never even proven during that era that any of these people actually became agents and sold out America. They went peacefully, peacefully into these camps. Much more peacefully than I would go, I'll tell you that. They went peacefully and they even sold their businesses before they went in to try to recoup some of their costs. Much of their stuff was confiscated by the government and given over to other people. It was very sad what happened to these people. And they're so humble, they don't even talk about it. They don't even talk about it. Just crazy. This is recent history. People still alive who went through this. So, this is the truth of our reality. Hopefully, I my hope and prayer every time you guys come here is that I can shed a bit, little bit of light into the real truth about what's going on in the world. Because if it is important that you know the truth. Because if you're going off of, you know, what you're seeing in the media and blowing in the wind of the media misinformation highway, you will be deceived. You will have strong feelings in all the wrong places as you watch the chaos around you in the world. And until you come back to the middle, which is where Christ is, and understand that all of these things have to happen, then you will be lost because you will make dumb decisions like, oh, I'm going to go help the Stukranians. 
which is what some people are doing. I'm going to get on a plane and go sign back up for the draft. I mean, this is just madness. It's all lies. And it's all lies on both sides. Look, I have no idea what the long-term ambitions and goals are of Pew Sit and Spin. I have no idea. I have no idea if he's going to stop at Stu Crane. Maybe they secretly do want to go further. I don't know the future, but I can tell you this. I can tell you who kind of started all this with their endless encroachment. And that was the country that has waged most of the wars and invasions over the last five decades. Us, the U.S. And its allies. So... Now I'm going to go into the chat. We'll do a little Q&A. With you guys. You guys are a blessing to me, John 316. You guys are a blessing to me. I'm just glad we can all still come together. And talk about all this. Because one day we won't be able to. Now if anything happens to this channel. Understand we have backup channels. And then we'll just switch over to those channels. If anything happens. I think YouTube's on a tear again. That's what they do. So. Can you look into the nine-tail fox stone that cracked yesterday in Japan? Okay. Trust no man. Absolutely. Now, someone mentioned China and Taiwan. Well, of course China is in a line with Russia. Because they're dealing with the same exact situation that they are dealing with in Taiwan. Okay. And I'm sure their ambitions is to take Taiwan back. But they can't because we're we're basically doing a proxy war with Taiwan as well. Helping them to, to ward off China. So China's going, look, if they're going to they're gonna fight Pusit and Spin over this. Then what's going to happen when we want to go get Taiwan? You see the problem? And this is why they're aligning with Rushka. Because they have similar interests. Now I'm not saying that. They should have interests in Taiwan. I'm just telling you how these countries think. All right. I'm telling you how they think. Now, there are biblical aspects of this that we haven't gone into. Kings mentioned in the Bible, kings of the north, uh, in, in their infighting and battle. So, all of this is in the Bible. And at some point, once we have a more complete understanding of what's going on with all this, we'll delve into the Bible and find out what direct correlations there are to the Bible. I don't like to um, guess on Bible prophecy. Let's put it this way. It took me a long time to come to terms with even the white horse. And after seeing so much evidence of the white horse and looking at the Greek root words and concordances and comparing everything to events happening in the world, I finally go, you know what? This has to be the white horse. But it took a long time. A lot of people, other people were already saying that like a year before that it was the white horse had been released. But we waited. And I want to do the same thing with the biblical prophecy as to what's happening right now. So at some point we will get into that. But not yet. Kim Blanchard says, what's the documentary I'm talking about? Well, it's on Truth Stream Media. And it's their latest upload. And it's prophecy. I mean, it's a... Um, Video about the internment camps during World War II. Thanks, April. April said Hefner, Hugh Hefner. He was the one involved with Bill Cosby. They were running some kind of, I don't know what they were running over there. But they were running cover for each other. And there was a victim involved. Probably several victims. Only one has commented on it. But you can look that story up. Just look up Bill Cosby, victim, and Playboy Mansion. And you can find that story. All right. The Japanese American troops were the most decorated in World War II. Now, thanks, Jim, for that. And the interesting thing is that was the only way that they could get out of the internment camp was to pledge their allegiance and go and fight for America. How bizarre is that? Kind of sounds like what's happening right now in Stu Crane, doesn't it? They're not letting men of fighting age leave the country. They are basically forcing them to stay there and either be cover for 
their armies or fight against the Rushkins. Wow. Thanks, Yavadaba. Thanks, Boomer Bear. Hardy Har Har. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. We'll be back in here tomorrow. And uh, I love each and every one of you. Have a great day, everybody. Take care and be safe.